So we're going to talk about uh, drilling angles, the principles of figuring out um, the angles on a post and rung chair. Hold on a second. Who are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Lefkowitz. I've been teaching uh, Boggs chairs in my shop for about 10 years. And prior to that, I assisted Brian at his... Um, at some of his classes, and I've, I've also developed um, uh, class manuals. One of the things about these ladder back or post and rung chairs is when people look at them, they think about how in the world do you figure out all those angles. You've got round parts, you often have bent parts like this. If you haven't done it or haven't had it explained to you, it can be a real leap to try to figure that out but before we start, we'll try to define what a post and rung chair is. Uh, the, the posts are the legs, the two front legs, two back legs, usually with the back, otherwise you'd have a stool, and runs. So the whole structure is these um, joints. The, the main part of the structure that holds the whole chair together is the joints between the rungs and the posts. And that's where you get the term post and rung chair. Uh, there's this, the slats, I don't believe really do much in terms of holding the chair together. We're going to be talking about rake and splay. Splay is uh, side to side angle of the front legs or the rear legs, side to side. So these do not do that. They go straight up and down. And rake, the, you can think of raking as uh, uh, like this, using a rake. That's how I initially remembered rake is front to back. <laughs> and then this, this chair in the back, again, this has no rake or splay. Rear legs go straight up and down. Uh, so this is the simplest form of post and rung chair. This um, assembly we're going to be, um, using in the demo is similar to that no rake or splay. So this is, this is an example of a chair with rake and splay. This one actually has a, a little bit of splay. It's, it's, you may not be able to see it, but a little bit of splay side to side, which means that this rung is shorter, a little shorter than this one. Front legs again are straight up and down. They may appear to be raking forward, but in the construct, that's a function of that, that we've leveled the chair and the back is <laughs> Kind of canting backward which kicks the bottom of this leg out but during construction this is straight up and down and then you can see that the rear legs lay backward and the rear leg uh, rake backward <laughs> rear legs rake backward and the rear legs lay side to side this is this is the chair this is the type of post and rung construction where people start scratching their heads about how to how to figure out all those drilling angles. So this this assembly uh, this assembly is um, similar to this one. It has no splay in the front front legs. So this rung and this rung are the same length. Rear front legs straight up and down, uh, looking at it from the front. So no splay. <coughs> From the side, front legs are still straight up and down. Rear legs splay backward, just like this one. And from the rear, uh, the legs, the rear legs splay side to side. This rung is longer than this one. Again, just like that assembly. So this is a very typical post and rung chair um, example. Uh, the, only, the only variation to this really is adding splay to the front legs. If you cut, we took this armchair, cut it off right above the top rungs, it would match this exactly. But, so I wanted to actually use an assembly that uh, we're actually using in, in real life. We build these armchairs all the time in class. And this, this is that assembly difference really is only in the rear legs between these two assemblies. So one of the things you can see is that at the top they match. 
and the place where they vary is in the river lines. You can see the difference there. So we're gonna um, we're gonna go through uh, first with the uh, simple assembly, no rink and display. We're gonna take it apart. We're gonna show you how we figure out all the drawing angles and put the thing back together. Okay.